Another $319 million of the loot of late head of state, General Sunny Abacha, surfaces in the United Kingdom and France, the United States has revealed. And the problem of cats in a state, according to its state governor, is not banditry, is banditry and not COVID-19. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for joining us. Now, barely a week after helping to repatriate $311 million, that's about 118 billion naira, stolen by the late head of state, General Sani Abacha, the United States has announced that there is a separate $319 million, an equivalent of 121 billion naira Abacha loot in the United Kingdom and France. The U.S. Embassy in Nigeria said in a statement that there is $167 million in stolen assets in France, while there is a separate $152 million in the U.K., which is being challenged in court. Abacha is estimated to have stolen as much as $5 billion during his five-year rule. Joining us to discuss this is David Ugolo, founder, African Network for Environment and Economic Justice. He joins us via Skype. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Lord. And of course, we have on the phone uh, Tokumbo Mumuni, the Executive Director of Serap. Pleasure to have your company. It's a pleasure. All right, gentlemen, let's start. Barely a week after helping to repatriate about one billion naira, the United States says there is more, an even higher figure of about 121 billion naira in the United Kingdom and France. Let me start with you. Um, Mr. David, what's your reaction? Well, um, we have to um, commend the U.S., the Nigerian government for, again, acting in a way that demonstrates that they are promoting the Global Forum on Asset Recovery Principles, which they all signed on to in December 2017. We are very happy. Uh, we applaud the steps taken by the U.S., the Nigerian government, in making sure that disclosure of assets tossed in Western banks are being disclosed, and they're giving political support to governments in Nigeria to be able to repatriate and use those money for sustainable development program. And we are very happy that the Nigerian government has also again demonstrated by announcing recently that they have they are in receipt of 311 million dollars from the, the Abasha 3 that for us is a big huge progress for the asset recovery work globally it demonstrates that the political will behind the GFAT principle is working in practice and i think the challenge for nigerian government is to walk the talk by making sure that the recovered asset is used judiciously. We are very happy that at least the government have announced that they are putting in place a framework that will ensure that citizens have access to information, particularly um, they are in the process of procuring a third party monitoring. And we are also happy that this will strengthen the broad coverage of monitoring across the country. And that is the only way to go to ensure that every recovered asset is used judiciously across Nigeria. One question, Mr. Mumuni. Many keep asking it. Why did it take so long to have some of the loot repatriated? Hello? I'm, I'm asking, can you hear me, sir? Yes. My question is, why did it take so long to have the monies repatriated? And we know there is still more out there. Thank you very much for having me. <clears throat> the truth of the matter is that... Um, the way Nigerians should have handled this matter, Nigeria has not been very aggressive in the pursuit of the money until the present government came in. It is indeed good that we are now having the returned money 
But what we have to ensure is that even if the United States of America did not give us any condition for the use of the money, Nigerian government should ensure that the money that is received as part of Abacha Roots must be spent judiciously in on matters that Nigerians, the majority of Nigerians who are actually the victims of corruption, benefit monumentally from the use of the money. That is very, very important. If indeed we must have value for the money that is returned. All right, before we go to other issues, I want to get uh, your thought, uh, Mr. Ugolo, um, on the Bloomberg report that the repatriation of the loot in France and UK is being challenged by Nigerian government, is being challenged rather by both um, governments in the UK and France over alleged plans by the Nigerian government to give about $100 million of that money to the Kebi state governor, um, Atiku uh, Bagudu, a known associate of uh, the late Abacha. Uh, let's bear in mind, though, that the AGF has denied this even, um, denied this even as Bloomberg insists that court papers say otherwise. I want to get your quick thought on that before we move on to other issues. Again, um, I think there's need to be clarification between Abasha 3 and Abasha 4. The Abasha 3 is the $311 million that has just been returned to Nigeria. The one you're talking about, the Atiku Bagudu, is the Abasha 4 that is in pipeline. And now there was an agreement between Nigerian government and Atiku Bagudu. And in that agreement, they do agree some deals. And an agreement was reached in 2018. Prior before then, there was an agreement in 2012, and the reversed agreement in 2018 provides um, framework for government to concede to Atiku Bagudu. First, when those concessions were reached in 2012, a broad coalition of civil society in Nigeria, including Anders Serap, Sislak, rejected the agreement and said that as far as we are concerned, any deal with any corrupt political elite in Nigeria is unacceptable. We condemned the deal in 2012, and we rejected it. We asked that no agreement should be carried out with any corrupt Nigerians. So we are very concerned. As we speak now, we are about appearing in the same court where this agreement is going on in UK, and we are insisting very clearly with a clear message to the Nigerian government and the U.S. and the U.K. government that no amount of those money should be given to Atiku Bagudu. All the money should be returned back to Nigeria. The money belongs to Nigerian people. And as far as we are concerned, the court in Switzerland declared Atiku Bagudu and the Abasha family as a criminal gang that exploited the opportunity they had in running this country. And so we are very concerned. And so, but the confusion in the public is that people don't understand the difference between the Abasha 3 and the Abasha 4. There is a difference. What we have received just last week is the Abasha 3, the $311 million. What you are talking about that is currently in the US, UK court is the Atiku Bagudu, which is the Abasha 4. And we are very concerned that the court process that is going on uh, is something that we need to be aware of. And we expect that the Nigerian government will be very clear in providing information that will enable Nigerians to be aware of what is going on in the UK court. And the agreement for 2018, which was revised under this regime, need to be also be put in the public domain. All right. Uh, let's come back to you, uh, Mr. Mumuni. Some Nigerians, including uh, San Femi Falano, has expressed displeasure and say the U.S. had no right to tell Nigeria what to do with the repatriated stolen funds. I want to get your perspective on that. Yes, it is indeed true that uh, if the money originally belonged to Nigeria, the money was removed from the treasury of Nigeria, it, is, it remains Nigeria's money, and there is no basis, and there is no way Nigeria should accept any condition 
being given by the American as a way for spending the money. That does not arise. It does not make sense. And it should never be allowed under any circumstance. They cannot dictate to us how the money should be spent. Whilst we agree that the money must be judiciously, should be judiciously spent, the way to spend it should be determined by Nigerians and Nigerian government and never by a dictator from the American government. Oh, but wouldn't you say that considering our checkered history with accountability and corruption, that that caveat is even for our own good to hold government accountable to ensure that the monies are used for exactly what they should be used for? So let me let me tell you straight that any Nigerian government has a responsibility as a democratically elected government to ensure that it keeps within the within Nigeria's existing laws, namely the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the citizens. If the business of Nigerian government is the security and welfare of the citizens, in this regard, we are talking about the educational welfare of Nigerian citizens, health of Nigerian citizens, and all other benefits of Nigerians. No Nigerian government has a right to spend the money in an awkward and an, in an untoward manner. That is a burden that the Nigerian constitution has already given to the Nigerian government. We they have a duty under Nigerian criminal law as well as under international law to adhere to. So that is enough as a, a basis for spending the money. We don't need any order from the, uh, from the American government as to the way the money should be spent. All right, uh, David, let me come back to you. Looking at the state of the nation and the anti-corruption war of this administration, what do you say the structure now is far better than the one that allowed the looting of funds by a batcher years ago? Again, um, um, I want to um, align myself with the positions of my very senior colleague, uh, 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 who have said very clearly um, the position that every Nigerian uh, um, would like to align themselves to, particularly on the issue of conditionality. I won't be campaigning on asset recovery for the past 25 years. I completely agree that the issue of conditionality is unacceptable. But however, uh, as with the knowledge and insight with what happened in 2004 and 2005, when the first tranche of the Abasha loot, that's the Abasha one, $480 million was transferred to Nigeria. We monitor that process and we can testify that what happened with that money is unacceptable. There was a broad corruption. And as we speak, Serap have written several letters to the Nigerian government and the World Bank, and there have not been any clarity and in our report independently produced, it was very clear that the money was mismanaged. Now, coming from that background, it's only fair for campaigners to begin to look for a means on how to guarantee when resources is repatriated back to the country of where it is stolen from. And now, it was this kind of momentum behind that call for a framework that will ensure that the money is properly utilized that led to the conference that was organized in 2017 in the United States. And Serap, Anerj, Sislak, all very credible, 10 leading Nigerian NGO participated in the Global Forum on Asset Recovery held in Washington, hosted by the US and the UK government. And after extensive discussion with the leading countries that participated in that forum in Washington, we all agreed in a basic principle, which was uh, the Global Forum on Asset Recovery principles. And there were 10 principles. And among those principles is the inclusion of civil society, the framework of transparency and accountability. They're making sure that when money is returned back to a country, you don't allow those who initially were involved in the stealing to benefit from the return.
Now, when you look all those principles, those are the principles that are contained in the agreement of Abasha 3. But unfortunately, um, those framework is seen as a condition. But it is not a condition. It is a framework of how transfer should happen. And so, but some people see it as condition, but we don't see it as condition. It is under what framework. And when you want to return a stolen asset back to a country, what you need to recognize is that it involves one or two jurisdictions. It involves okay. one or two okay. jurisdictions that is beyond just one jurisdiction. And so you need trust. You need the cooperation of the other country. You need the support of the other country. And so in the case of this Abasha 3 we are talking about, when people talk about condition, the money is no longer in Nigeria. It was stolen by our political leaders, deposited in foreign banks, and now to return it under the asset recovering global convention regime, under the UNCAC, there is a provision for negotiation. And the process of negotiation recognized, recognized the fact that, that the country that where the money is deposited need to participate in the negotiation. Right. And in that negotiation, there are conditionalities. And when you say conditionality, what on what framework? That framework is transparency and accountability. The country must also identify what they want to use the money for. So, and if you look what we experienced in Abasha 1 in 2004, compared to what we have experienced in Abasha 2 now, where the $322.5 million was returned back from Switzerland, you will see a marked difference. And what is the difference? Because when the return was coming from Switzerland, there was understanding between the two countries, Nigeria and Switzerland. It was contained in the agreement. And in that agreement, it was stated very clearly what the money would be used for and the role of civil society. So right. in Abasha 3 as well too, the same thing that was also going to happen. So right. there must be a framework. And once there is no framework, countries where the governance system is very weak is bound to misuse the money. And we all know the situation in Nigeria, that the, the, that the finance framework in Nigeria is weak. All right, let's, let's, let's hear um, the Serap director's uh, thought on this as well. Um, but let me put it a little differently. Do you feel that the federal government has shown enough transparency in terms of information sharing on the management of looted funds uh, to guarantee that this time more will be seen to have been done? Let me tell you that on the question of Abacha loot, Sarah went to the court asking, among other things, that the, that the government of Nigeria should give us a detailed account of what they have received as part of Abasha Luth. If some of the money has been spent on certain projects, they should name the project. If, they are, if, it, if, it, if the projects are named, they should give, they will give us the location of the project. That is a judgment of a court of competent jurisdiction, a federal court in Lagos. The, the African Federation promised Nigerians to, to implement that judgment. That judgment has today not been implemented. So, in that regard, I would say that this government has not been forthcoming in the way, in the manner, in the modality that it has adopted in spending the Abacha loop. So that, so, so that extent, I would say this government has not been forthcoming in terms of accountability and transparency in the spending of Abacha's money. And that is not good for this government. Because this government says, I am here for the war against corruption. I am here for transparency and accountability. How else do you want to be accountable when you don't tell us the details of what you have received from Abacha and the details of how you have spent the money? That is the only way you can be accountable and transparent. Without that, I would say that this government has not been forthcoming with Nigerians on the sharing of information regarding the Abacha 
So what, what, what confidence do you have um, in the AGF's explanation that the funds will be used uh, for infrastructure or project? Uh, some are suggesting, let, let, me, let me leave it there first and uh, get your reaction. What, what level of confidence that the funds will be used this time? I mean, your request before now, there's been no response. Hello? Uh, did you get any of my question at all? No, repeat the question, please. All right, I'm saying that uh, based on what you've just, um, writing off what you just said, the ADF had explained that the funds will be used for infrastructural uh, projects. But with what you have said, do you think that we will see these projects this time? No, good. The, the ADF is an agent of the government. It is, in fact, I sincerely believe that the fund should be used to cure the various infrastructural deficits that we have in Nigeria. Health are not okay. Education, education are not okay. So if they can be spent to strengthen and augment health and education, so that the masses of Nigerian people who have for long been at the, at the brunt, they have suffered for this corruption. If they can benefit, they will believe that that will be okay. I believe that the explanation of that in general, that it will be spent on infrastructure, is okay, and it will be to the benefit of Nigerians. All right, Mr. Ogola, let me bring you back in and ask about the suggestion, uh, again, by Femi Falano, that um, it is better to share the monies among the three tiers of government. What would be your suggestion on how these funds can be best utilized for the benefits of Nigerians? Well, again, uh, I think um, Femi Falano is right. Every receipt should, according to the Nigerian constitution, be put into the federation account, and the National Assembly should appropriately. And um, after the fund has been shared among the three ties of government, and as you know, we have the federal, the state, and the local government. But what has happened in the last few um, uh, recovery we have received from abroad is that the federal, the federal government have uh, taken absolute 100% control even to the extent that um, the Iburi money that need to be returned back to debt state uh, was also almost going to be going to the federal government. And now we resisted that and raised an alarm that every recovering that belonged to state need to return back to state. And for the federal government that received no negotiate on behalf of the country, they must work in line with our constitution. So I completely um, support um, Femi Falana's position on the sharing in accordance with our constitution. But you see, we need to rise up. The state governors need to rise up. And they, um, they, if they will not allow, the, because if they continue to act in a way, continue to receive patronage from the federal and thinking that the federal government will act like a big boy to support them, they are living on past glory. It's that will never well. happen. They need to come and build a force to begin to ask. And that brings me to the questions again. We must unpack the asset recovery process. We have an Abasha 1, the first recovery that happened in 2004. We have the Abasha 2, which is the one that is currently going for the cash transfer program. And what um, my colleague is saying, uh, Adet Kumbo, we must be able to say that the letter Serap have sent to the federal government was specifically requesting for explanation on how Abasha 1 was used. I'll and suggest that, you wrap up quickly because we're out of time, sir. So we need to have a clarification. But in the Abasha 2, what has happened is that the government has agreed that the money should be used for cash transfer program. And in the Abasha 3, the government have agreed to use the money for major three infrastructural projects.
Now, the challenge for Nigeria is to begin to ask the government. Unfortunately, the, source, the access to information has been difficult. And this challenge has been something that has been expressed in the communication between Serap and the federal government. But us as civil society in the Abasha too, we were asked to monitor the process. We can see a huge difference in terms of access to information in Abasha too. All and right. this is the kind of information regime that we want in moving forward with Abasha 3. All and right, I'm Michelle sure Gladon. that this gives confidence to the international community in how they spend the money. And I am very confident that if the federal government continue to allow civil society to monitor the process and they allow citizens to have access to information and the framework for decision making on what project should be the money recovered should be used for, it will create trust and it will help energize and create a political will. All right, Mr. Angola, we are out of time, truly. I um, apologize for interrupting once again. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the program. Yes, thank you very much, Felicity. And Mr. Mumuni, thank you very much for your time as well. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Good. Yeah, too. You take care now. All right. A state governor tells us what is really the problem of his state. That is up for discussion after this break. <laughs>